Good morning, y'all. It is a beautiful morning out here at Camp Semper Canine. And this morning, I wanted to do a little video about what I do in the mornings when I'm coming out in the garden. I'm looking for pest damage. And I wanted to share just how I do those types of things with y'all so that, um, you know, you be proactive in your garden. That's super important to do. So let's get started. So typically when you are inspecting your plants, which you should be doing on a pretty regular basis, I feel like you should be doing it every day if you can, especially if your garden is on site. We don't actually live where our garden is, so it's more deliberate for us to have to drive out here and we have to come out to take care of chickens anyway. So um, this is also where we do our training for Semper Canine with our service dogs and our veterans and our volunteers meet out here to do our training, especially during COVID-19 right now. So, um, you know, not really any public areas open that we can train and being outdoors is the safest. Anyway, back to checking for pest damage. So this is our uh, lemon cucumber plant that's in the front of the garden here. And one of the things you're gonna be looking for is little holes where something's been munching on your plants. And if you didn't know, most, um, most insects that lay eggs on your plants are gonna lay them up under the leaf to protect from rain um, and sunlight. So if you do notice some um, damage and you're not seeing bugs immediately, I see a few ants on here, they are fine. They're probably eating the bugs. Ants are one of those insects that are beneficial and uh, a pest. So it really just depends on what your ants are doing. Um, as to what category they fall in. This is, I haven't seen any damage on this plant yet. I'm not seeing any bugs at the moment, but uh, since I don't have any rain in the forecast coming up, I will be spraying these with neem oil, um, maybe this evening. And you do need to, if you're gonna treat for any pests, I use all organic um, methods because we have the bees. I'm definitely not gonna do anything that is going to damage or harm my bee population, our honeybees. Um, so you definitely want to do that in the evening time and when there's no chance of rain in the forecast. I mean, rain is going to um, slow down and pretty much eliminate all of the pest, that, uh, pest control efforts that you're trying to make. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of other damage. I mean, damage on your beans. Um, this is probably a cucumber beetle or flea beetle. There's a bunch of different names for different bugs. I actually have an app that helps me identify pests based off of what plant um, it might be. And then I also use Google Lens. If I can take a picture of the bug, I will use Google Lens to help me identify what the animal is or the, the insect is or animal. And then I will, um, do some research on if that's a beneficial insect or if it's a pest. So let's go inside the garden and look look over some other plants. So like I was saying before, on your beans, you're definitely going to get that flea beetle, um, cucumber beetle, whatever you want to call it, damage. The, when the June bugs come, which I saw my first June bug yesterday, they also can be pretty devastating. And you can see here, this is a noodle bean that I planted randomly trying to get it to grow up this trellis. Um, the damage on this is pretty heavy. And I do have some nitrogen issues here going on in my green bean bed. But I did sprinkle DE, which is diatomaceous earth, on these. Now how that kind of works is the, the insect has to actually bite into it. I mean, that's the neem oil, I'm sorry. The diatomaceous earth, it's supposed to kill the insect on contact. So if the insect is on there when you're sprinkling it on, or if the insect is um, climbs onto the plant that has the DE on it, it's supposed to kill it off. Um, neem oil is one that will kill 
the insect as it bites into it. So you will get some damage with the neem oil. However, I prefer using the neem oil. Um, I use DE as a last resort. And then I also use um, BT, which is a, a, a caterpillar um, killer, like for the cabbage loopers and that sort of thing. But anyway, so since I did sprinkle DE, um, have not had uh, any noticeable damage that was extra. And I also uh, put some blood meal in here a couple of days ago, and I've already noticed a little bit of a difference in the color of my green beans. These were nitrogen deficient. These ones are not. These ones are doing great. These are um, Christmas pole beans. And I have a Kajari melon here that I'm growing alongside that will help climb this trellis and make this really pretty space. Um, a normal pest that you're going to get with squash, there's lots of them. However, um, I, I've been fortunate enough that I don't ever have vine borers or anything like that. I mean, I hear a lot of people talking about them. Um, knock on wood, I've not had any issues with my squash plants. So I'm just very thankful for that. There are a lot of people who have a lot of issues. I've seen some cucumber beetles. Um, on my uh, squash leaves, there's not really a lot of damage going on with those. So fortunately, I haven't had any major issues with squash pests. But again, I'm always looking, I'm trying to be proactive. If I can see something that's a problem now, then I immediately try to solve the problem, figure out how I can correct it. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to check your garden every day because you can be proactive. A hornworm, which knock on wood, I have not found one this year. Last year, we only had one, um, can wipe out a whole tomato plant in a day, like the whole plant, uh, even more. And I've seen some people in some of the Facebook groups that I'm in and see, I can see a little damage over here on this tomato plant, uh, potato plant. That's exactly what I was about to say. Sharing some pictures of their potato plants that are just completely stripped bare. So this one may not be pest damage. Um, I'll do some research into that. I'm not really seeing any signs um, of a pest that was here. But again, I'm looking at all of my plants. No, I don't check the back of the leaves of all of my plants, but if I see a problem area, I check that area over really well and all the plants that are around it. I'm looking on the ground to see if there's any pests, uh, any, you know, poop from the pest. That's normally a good indicator of what type of pest you have if the damage has already been done. Um, so that's kind of the things I'm looking for every morning when I walk through the garden. And I'm seeing some damage on my sage here. Don't know what would be getting after that. Maybe a grasshopper. Sage is one of those and some of your herbs are pretty protected in the garden. I mean, you use them to help deter pests. So sage is one of those that, sage, rosemary, I mean, most of your herbs, you don't typically get a lot of pest issues on because they're gonna help you with that. I'm not seeing a lot, I'm not seeing a lot of issues. I mean, like I said, we have some of the leaf that's getting chomped on. I haven't seen a lot of new damage. I've seen some, but not enough for me to do a complete treatment. I am starting to see some uh, damage over here on my cabbage. So now that the thunderstorms have subsided tonight, I will be coming out here and treating my cabbage. I will spray my beans and I will be proactive and spray the plants that are close to those. Let's see what do we have over here. Nothing major going on here. Artichokes looking beautiful. Have a little bit of munching going on on my Brussels sprouts. So those will also get sprayed with neem oil tonight. And obviously if I'm seeing any sign of 
insect damage and I see the actual insect, I'm going to be eliminating the insect. And I'm also going to be double checking and make sure, making sure that he doesn't have any friends hanging around. I put this little ladder mesh in yesterday to try to help this guy grow a little. It might not be quite sturdy enough, but it's one of those trial things. Gosh, this bloom on this pumpkin right here. The sun is hitting it. It's just so pretty. It's a male flower. So beautiful. Okay, but anyway, so this is a quick video on um, what I do every morning. I do this every morning, and then I do it at night, too, every day. So I am looking. Gosh, this bed is just so green. I got to get in there and weed in between some of this. And my cucumbers look like they're kind of wilting a little bit. So I need to come back here. I have another piece of that ladder mesh, and I was thinking about making another little trellis for them, like a separate one. And I've got to harvest this lettuce, too. But anyway, that's kind of what I'm doing every day in the garden. I'm looking for, for that grasshopper. That's grasshopper damage. Um, I, you know, I'm looking for problem areas that I can fix now or that I can research throughout the day to find out how to correct it. And when you have a large garden, it is very hard to stay on top of this, but it's so important for the health of your garden, not for just this season, but for the future plantings that you're gonna do because some of the pests stay around year after year. It goes the same way with disease, funguses and that sort of thing. And I have some stuff to harvest this morning. I am so excited. All right, y'all. That is my little tip. I guess it's a long tip at this point. You know, to, to check your garden every day for disease, pests, be proactive, figure out how you can get this nipped in the bud if it's a problem. And, um, is that a ladybug? Nope. See, there's a flea beetle right there. Cucumber beetle, whatever you want to call it. People call bugs all different kinds of things. My app says that this is called a flea beetle. And he is eating my leaf. I don't know if you can see it. Come on, there he is. See him eating that leaf? I gotta get rid of him, like, now. So, I will see y'all later. I'm filming a garden tour in just a moment, and that'll be on my YouTube channel later this afternoon. Y'all have a wonderful day. See y'all next time.